so let's move to sensitivity report uh, in the sensitivity reports you can see two sections the first section is about the variable cells and the second section is about the constraints and in the variable cells you can see the decision variables uh, and the, their final value which are the optimal value of the problem when we use the use when solve them using the solver and the current value of the objective coefficient in the objective objective function of the linear program model and then you can see two more columns at the end of the tables one of them is the represent the values that we can increase uh, the, the coefficient obje objective values uh, the coefficient of the objective values in a specific range uh, for example I can increase the value of the objective function of the first variables by 100 and uh, decrease it by 50 units um, if I do so given that the other constraints other the other parameters are fixed then the objective value is not going to change. This means that even though the slope of the level curve is changing, but the optimal value, optimal solution of the problem is not going to change. So uh, this is the range that still the value that we got, these values uh, for the uh, decision variables is going to stay uh, constant. In the second one, we see uh, constraints, and uh, we have three constraints for this problem. And you, you can, it has uh, final values and shadow price and right hand side. And then uh, the value that we can increase and decrease. The final value is the uh, left hand side, uh, the value of the constraint itself. And then right hand side is the the constraint the value the b's that we have the value of b1 to b2 and b3 pay attention that if the final value as the and right hand side constraints are equal that means that this constraint is binding the similar way that we see we saw in the answer report so you can see that final value of the first constraint and the constraint right hand side is equal so that means this constraint is binding and also the second constraint because the value of the final value on the right hand side are equal that means this constraint also is a binding constraint and then we have a shadow price that we are going to talk in a moment but uh, this uh, shadow basically shadow price means that if I increase the right hand side by one unit if I increase it by unit by one unit I'm gonna get uh, objective function increased by this value uh, notice to the sign of these values if these signs are positive that means if I increase the right hand side by one unit I'm gonna get this much value increase to my objective function so let's test this one on the solution of the problem that we already solved so this is the optimal value of the parameters that we have and the set of the problem is exactly same as the uh, optimal solution that we got for this problem so let's increase the first constraint by one unit and see how much uh, is going to increase our total profit or objective value so I increase it to from uh, 200 to 201 and you can see that the, the objective function has increased from 6, 60,100 to 66,300 so that means 200 has been increased to the total profit so this is the value of the uh, shadow price so basically shadow price means that if I could increase one unit of the resources by uh, one unit if I increase it how much is gonna improve my profit you can see uh, the second uh, constraint has a smaller uh, shadow price that means the first constraint has uh, much more effect on the 
the objective function. And then we have set all the constraint, set all the values that we can increase or decrease the objective function. Uh, 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 the constraint. So we can incre increase the first constraint by seven unit and decrease by twenty six unit. This basically says that if I increase uh, right hand side in this range by seven units or decrease by this much, I have a change on the objective function uh, two hundred units whenever I change one unit. If I have a two unit change in the right hand side, if I increase 200 uh, into 202, then I'm gonna have two times 200 as a increase in the objective function. Or if I decrease by three units and make it right hand side 197, then I'm gonna have three times reduction in the objective function. Similarly, we have the same range for the second constraint, but pay attention to the third constraint that is uh, the shadow price is zero. Uh, comparing the final values and the constraint right hand side, you can uh, see that this constraint is not binding. We had a similar conclusion in the answer report one that the third constraint is not binding. So this means that if I increase in this range, uh, I will not get any increase in the objective function or decrease in the objective function. So any change in within this range, uh, if I increase right hand side by this unit, I'm not going to get any change on the objective function. So remember that shadow price for non-binding constraint is always zero. and uh, change of the right hand side of the non-binding constraint in this range in the allowable uh, range is not going to change the objective functions value shadow price has a very Im important information for us um, let's say we want to in, uh, introduce new product for this company and the product is going to take uh, one pump eight hours of the labor and 13 uh, feet of the tubing so we want to decide whether this uh, adding a, this product is a helpful or not. So it's going to take one uh, pump and uh, uh, eight hours of the labor and 13 hours of pumping. So in this case, the cost associated with adding this uh, new product is going to be 200 times uh, one plus uh, this times this so the basically shadow price is gonna give you uh, adding a new product to the this uh, model so if I add all of this cost uh, it says if I add a new product is to this uh, model the cost with uh, this new product is gonna be 333 and 34 dollars because it's gonna take one unit from this product and uh, eight units from this one so total cost of the uh, new pro producing new product is gonna be, be this much if the profit of the new product is less than this value then uh, introducing a new product is not uh, feasible that means uh, that's not worthwhile so if but if the value is more than this let's say if the profit associated with the, this new product is 350 then that's a profitable product and we can have that so this is the value that uh, this shadow price provides us more analysis about the situation the problem we are dealing with so this is very important information So we talk every uh, about every columns in this uh, sensitivity report, but uh, we haven't talked yet about the reduced cost. Basically, reduced cost is a 
difference between the marginal profit, uh, the profit that one unit of uh, each product make, minus the resource that this product consumes. For example, uh, uh, take it product one, X1, uh, the objective value of this, fa uh, this product is, uh, the coefficient of the objective value is 350. And uh, it uh, uses one from the product, uh, uh, one pump and uh, nine uh, labor hours and uh, 12 tubing. So if we multiplied each, uh, each of these values by the reduced by the shadow shadow price we are going to get uh, these values so if we add all of these values uh, we get uh, so if we add up all of these numbers we get this value 350 and then if we uh, take the difference of the objective co coefficient minus this value objective value minus this value we got zero so essentially means that the difference between the uh, profit that makes this product and the uh, materials that use this product is zero basically when we have uh, parameters and the, the value of the parameters are the in the uh, range that means for example x1 and x2 we defined as a they have to be positive and, uh, and the, the maximum value that they can take is a positive infinity and because their value is in this range uh, uh, the reduced cost associated with these parameters is zero basically if we have a maximization problem and the value of the parameters are the between upper and lower bonds then the reduced costs associated with these parameters are zero but if they are on the lower bonds the value of the reduced cost is going to be negative and if they are on the upper bond then that's be that's going to be positive but if the type of the problem is the minimization then the sign of the uh, reduced cost on the simple lower band and the simple upper bond uh, is going to change is going to be reverse of the maximization problem but the variable if the variables is is between the lower and upper bonds uh, the, still the value of the reduced cost is going to be uh, zero now we want to investigate the change of the constraints coefficient let's say uh, let's consider example uh, the company wants uh, to uh, introduce new product which uh, they uh, use seven hours of the labor and 13 hours of the tubing and uh, it use one pump so we want to check whether producing this new product is a profitable or not to do so you, we need to compute the re reduced cost that is a profit that this product makes minus the cost of this product so the cost associated with this product is the one unit pump which is multiplied by 200 which is the uh, cost associated with this product uh, uh, pump so in this example the uh, shadow price of the pump is uh, 200 and then we have shadow uh, shadow price of the second constraint is associated uh, 16.67 and seven of them use this new product and uh, the sh shadow price of the third constraint is zero and uh, this product is using uh, 13 of them so if we calculate this number we get uh, a positive number uh, that means that uh, producing the new product is a profitable so we can produce this uh, product but let's say uh, we, we are looking for maximum uh, we, we want to find one of the parameters we want to change one of these parameters of the uh, 
constraint, one of these coefficients that makes this product uh, feasible. For example, let's say we are looking for no maximum number of hours that makes this product prof uh, profitable. Let's say ex still this product use one pump and we are looking for a number of the labors that needs to make this product profitable and still it's using 13 hours of the tubing. So to do so, we just need to find the reduced cost, which is the reduced cost is the profit that this product makes minus the cost associated with production of this cost. Uh, so 320 is the profit that this product makes and minus because it used one pump it's the uh, reduced cost of the pump uh, uh, the cost associated with uh, the shadow price of the pump is 200 so we have minus 200 minus shadow price of the labor is uh, 16.67 so we are looking for maximum hours that uh, uh, if we this product consume that product becomes uh, feasible by solving this equation we got 7.2 so if this product this product is uh, profitable as long as this product needs 7.2 hours or less for producing each uh, 7.2 hours of the uh, second uh, constraints which is a uh, labor uh, then it's gonna be profitable otherwise uh, this product is not uh, prof profitable so far we talked about the changing one of the coefficient of the objective uh, function and the remaining the rest constant so let's do a little change and um, uh, change two of the parameter at the same time uh, pay attention to the reduced cost of the uh, C1, uh, X1 and X2, which both are zero. So let's say I change this one uh, within the possible range. So I increase this one by 50 units, which is uh, in the feasible area of this range that is I'm allowed to increase by uh, 100 units. And then let me in uh, increase the second one by... Uh, 20 units so I'm increasing this one by 20 units and you can see still the objective function the optimal values are same exactly the same as the one that we already solved uh, so right now the coefficient objective of the original coefficient objective was 350 and 300 but right now I changed to 400 and uh, 320 but still you can see the optimal values are exactly same as the original problem uh, now we want to so this is not a coincidence this is not a random thing uh, basically we when we change the coefficient of the objective function uh, multiple coefficient at the same time we have two general scenarios one is that all of the coefficients uh, that we are changing they have the reduced cost of the zero like the x1 and the x2 that we already changed but uh, the second scenario is that uh, some of these parameters may have a, a non-zero reduced cost generally when we have a reduced cost of the zero uh, all of the parameters that we are changing the coefficient of the objective function that we are changing uh, if the changes are within the area, within the allowed area, allowed range, right now for 350 is between, I can increase by 100, decrease by 350, by 50. So if I change the up coefficient of the x1 and x2 in the given range, then the value of the optimal x1 and x2 is going to be same. This is guaranteed that if I change all of the parameters within this range, it's going to stay uh, same. But whenever I have a reduced cost of the non-zero, then the situation is going to be a little different. Uh, in, the, in that case, uh, we have to compute this equation. So, ij uh, 
key and represent the values that I'm allowed to increase like the one that we have here this is 100 for this parameter so for let's say if this is j equal to 1 then i i of this one is uh, i1 is going to be 100 and then we have a another terminology here dj which is the maximum that i can increase so dj d1 for the associate with the x1 is a 50 and for the second one is a 666.67 so delta cj represent the change of in the coefficient that uh, uh, cj the second cj uh, so let's say i am changing this objective value to uh, 400 so 400 minus 350 represent the delta cj which is going to be 50 so positive 50 if i reduce this 350 to 250 then this is going to be minus 100 so whenever we change any parameters if i increase it i should i need to divide it by uh, ij the value that i'm allowed to increase and whenever i reduce the cj i have to take the minus cj minus delta cj over the value that i'm allowed to increase and then because either one of these cases happens I have a value for rj if the rj is less than one that means I'm the objective function that we the value of the optimal solution that we are going to get is gonna be stay same so that's guaranteed uh, this uh, whenever we change for multiple coefficient we just need to get rj of each of the parameters based on this equation if you are increasing I have to divide the the value the the value change on the cj over the ij um, or if we are decreasing the cj we have to get the minus of delta cj over the dj and add them up if the summation of rj is less than one then the current solution remains optimal but if it's greater than one then there is no guarantee but However, it can it may remains optimal, so, but there is not anything guaranteed in that case. So if the summation of the RJ is positive, uh, more than one, that means uh, that nothing is guaranteed to be optimal anymore. Solver uh, Excel Solver provides one more report, and uh, that is the limit limits so you solve the model and uh, in the report section just select the limits and uh, a new workbook worksheet is going to open up like a limit report one here so basically this reports uh, limit report has a two section one section is that reports uh, objective value and then uh, the value of the each uh, decision variables and their optimal value and also one more interesting thing is is that in this report you can see if we set uh, one of the parameter how much we can decrease the another parameter so lower limit this column represent the value that we can reduce given that uh, fix the other one for example if we fix this 78 then we can get uh, zero and this 78 and 0, zero uh, that means x1 is 0 and x2 is 78 satisfy all the constraints and the uh, objective result is going to be this much so remember that uh, 350 was the coefficient of the first objective function and the 300 was the coefficient of the second one so if i uh, multiply this value by 0 and then multiply this value by this number I'm gonna get uh, this one and similarly you can put the zero for this one uh, for the second uh, second decision variable and uh, 122 for the second uh, for the first decision variable and you are gonna get the, uh, this objective value the upper limit is uh, sets this one uh, sets this one parameter at the optimal value and try to increase that so obviously we are not going to be able to 
increase these values and uh, because these are the optimal solutions that we have.